Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Chicago Communicator On Point this evening with the President of the United States in here in Chicago. I and to I just wanted to, to uh, ask you guys, I mean, were you aware that he was coming? Did anybody know that he was going to be here? And, um, no, and, you know, I didn't. And you know oh. what? That's okay. Because some stuff you got to keep quiet. Yeah. You know, they, they talk too doggone much. That's why one of the things I liked about the president, uh, Obama, he kept a lot of stuff to, close to the president. He didn't tell all his business. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and they, they talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They talk too much. <laughs> yeah, they talk too much. Now, you know, let You froze the boar. I can't hear you. I we didn't know he was coming here. Yeah. But yeah. we knew his wife a week before she went to Ukraine that she was going there. I thought that was the craziest stuff in the world. Mm -hmm. For them to announce that the way they did. Because it, you know, it gives time for the crazies to set up. Mm -hmm. and do strange things so you know it, it in some cases you should be able to know the movement but sometimes you know you can't tell all your business hey what say you uh don what do you think about that situation did you know that president that the president was coming into town today i didn't necessarily know he was coming in i, I uh like <clears throat> found out this morning it's because I watch the news all the time. Okay. They may have mentioned it early this week, you know, as part of his itinerary, but uh, I mostly heard about it this morning. Well, you know that he went, his first stop was in Kankakee. Okay. And he I went saw that to too. see the farmers. Okay. I saw, yeah, I saw you know, that too. We going down the Pembroke uh, Juneteenth celebration. Oh. We're going to be down in Pembroke and we want everybody to come down there to talk about the farming situation there, you know. Okay. That's that's, that's not far from uh, Kankakee. Oh, okay. And that's okay. where a lot of the black farmers are. So have you sent an announcement out about that trip? No, I'm still trying to finalize uh, things. Okay. With the contact there. I was telling Don that we need to get together as independent black media and form these coalitions so that we can do things collectively together. Yes. There's yes. a bigger punch. We get more of our <laughs> money if, if it's more of us talking the same language than if I'm trying to do it my way and by myself and you trying to do it your way and by yourself, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. We need to, we need to unify. And so in my mind, the pandemic really created an environment for us to do just that. It's called remote broadcasting. Yes, just like folks is, is trying to change their uh, work habits to remote. Yeah, it's cheaper. I mean, we can communicate, we can see each other, we can share information. I've set this Zoom up so that you can share something from your computer and we can all see it, or you can share something from your computer and we can all see it. And that is the environment we need to establish for ourselves so that mm -hmm. we can become more connected, communicate better, and share and, information. And collaborate. And collaborate. Collaborate. Yeah. We have to collaborate. Yes. Defi definitely have to collaborate with other media streams uh, to so, get the reach out. That's right. That's right. So, um, what, what we're going to, uh, send some comments to the white house, uh, after this show today, uh, to ask the president some questions that we might've asked him had we been, uh, made aware that he was coming to Chicago. And, uh, so that we could have been there to cover it. But they, uh, the, the, the president's staff brought their own media with them. Mm. So it was kind of like close to the other, to the rest of us. 
unless you registered uh, the day, a couple of days before. I, okay. I did register, but they didn't even find the registration to today. Mm -hmm. So, But the point is, so we need to know so that we could be there to, mm -hmm. to communicate with the president. Well, so it we used to ask be some questions. So since we weren't there and unable to communicate with him, then now we're going to communicate with him via email. So, and we might even send him a copy of the show. So we want to make sure that we think about what it is we want to share with him. What is it we want him to know about the African-American community, our small businesses, our young people that are for whatever reason, running rampant, eliminating themselves, mm -hmm. what kind of support can he render to help us in, increase programmings that would help keep them off the street, give them something constructive to do, learn how to produce their own uh, Well, you know what? That, that, that's all well and good. And at his level, the what he gives is the money. It's at the local level that we have to address how that money is spent. You mm -hmm. see, they got they give a lot of money. Look at all this money that's still in the coffers from the pandemic that have been set aside. And it's not being used. That's local. But I don't think it's, it's been set aside and not being used. I think that uh, small businesses like our businesses, you have to go through so much red tape that you don't qualify to access that money. And See, so that's not, that's not doing us any good. Right. So where 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 are those restrictions? Where did those restrictions come from? Where's those loopholes? Where were they created? At at that level? Okay, so then there's that's one why, of the that's questions. why they were created at that level and then and then they were recreated <laughs> at the local level and they've been manifested and continued for years. So we have to do something to enter to engage them and change those uh, regulations that don't help us to garner the support we need. What's what say you, Mr. Jack Jackson? What was that now? Was, what, yeah, did what, you ask me a specific question? Or what? Oh, well, yeah, I was saying, what, what's your opinion on, on how we should approach and how and or whether we should approach the president with our issues that are local, but they're really global. Because I think it's happening to, to people around the country. That's kind of a wide question. <laughs> yeah. No, because, because you it's, said. But it's to give first you the latitude said, uh, to say what you want to say. Yeah. Um, well, what, well, what you're doing right now, trying to gather information to, so you can send to him. Uh, I think we need to be a little bit more specific. Okay. So, what, yeah, what, so what, what, it, how? How, how is there a specific? specific? Yeah, well, um, let me let me talk about the uh, the program I have. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm with the Community Peace Program, and we're sponsors of the Inglewood Battle of the Stars Talent Show, which involves uh, children five to thirteen. Oh. And the purpose of the fundraiser is the money that we raise for this. We're gonna put it in the fund, and anyone that's murdered in the Inglewood community. There'll be an automatic reward for the apprehension and conviction of said perpetrators, whether they be uh, 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 gang related, police related, like in terms of, uh, you know, George Floyd, um, domestic violence, or just children being murdered in general. Now, I said that specific, uh, Brother uh, Travis, when he was talking, you know, he mentioned about locking everybody up. And I was I was saying like, what I was talking about was more specific, not something that's general. Or when we talked about uh, one of the things uh, Biden mentioned on TV today was that he didn't like uh, 
the program of defunding the police, you know, and um, maybe there's other opinions about that. Yeah, I don't want to defund the police either. You know, um, and you know, um, like me personally, I, you know, it's it could be defunded if you if people explain what they mean by defunded. Yeah, you know? I, I wanted the, the money to shift to where it will help better. That's what I believe everyone says, but when you know when the, when the when the press gets through it, it's just like, you know, he don't want to defend fund the police, but he may be like, you know, like uh like Bor said, you know, you want the money shifted someplace, you ain't so interested in just getting rid of the police. Right. You know, but that's the thing I think uh -huh. about with TV and stuff is talking about well, what does that actually mean? Not defined by monopolistic capitalists defining what it means, but the people on the streets, what they mean by defund the police. They ain't talking about getting rid of the police. Right. They're talking about again shifting the resource. Maybe that's right. to the okay. 41 percent of the money into uh the police, cut that in half and put 20% more of that into education. But well, when you say questions. defund the police, that's to me, that means defund the police to take money away from the police. So uh, I don't, I don't know what you mean by that's not what people mean when they say that. Uh, I, I'm just saying when I hear from the different people who, who started the uh, concept of defund the police, like I said, they want to take the money instead of putting like in Chicago, they have 43 percent or 41 percent of the budget that goes into the police department. I'm saying, why can't that go into the social services? Why can't that go into education? Okay. Because for but one thing, like for example, one thing, for example, the classrooms are over, uh, you don't need no 30 students in no classroom. Mm -hmm. You know, you can cut that down, hire more teachers, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, cut that down because that makes, it mean, that means you, the, the, the students can get, you know, more personal, Right, direct contact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, teaching and stuff, and mm -hmm. and that would go a long ways to cut down crime. Because one of the things you can talk about in school, which they don't do, is how crime is related to students. How crime is related to that public school system. But well, how does that have anything to do with the police budget? Because again, again, like I said before, the police budget got forty three percent of the budget of uh, Chicago. And that's to the police department. I'm saying no. Yeah, make it twenty percent, no, no, and and you know put more into education, put more into social services stuff, more into the children, police, into the children. Mm -hmm. You know, and not make it a situation where like, you know, uh, the pension <laughs> that has to be addressed. That you know, a lot of that that funding is for the pension, and again. The police, the actual police people, they need education. They need support in the mental challenges. So if I'm you take that money away, mm -hmm. you know, that, that money that they have needs to be readdressed, not taken away and put in to other funds who- Like education? Where that money needs, like education, they have that pension problem as well. That money, they, they, all of that needs to be re-addressed the way the money is collected and the way the money is spent. And I know Travis talks about the different districts and, you know, you have a superintendent in district one that is there for two or three years, get a pension and then goes over to district two there for two or three years and gets a pension. It's, it's that type of thing needs to be addressed. The money is there. They just not budgeting properly. Even I with that's different... what we're in agreement on, uh, DeBoer. I'm saying we're in agreement on that. There's no okay. disagreement between you on, on that. I'm just saying instead of putting 43% of the, of, the, of the city's budget into the police, allocated in other different ways. The only thing you, you're also saying it can be allocated in different ways. There's no difference between what we're saying. And that's what I was saying about earlier is making you know, people like Biden to explain that. Mm -hmm. You know, explain that needs to be put out there. What do you mean by defund the police? 
we're sitting in the room, you saying that you saying that wall is blue, and I'm saying that wall is eight, and I'm raising my voice, you raising your voice. That wall is eight feet tall. Oh no, that wall is the wall is blue, the wall is eight feet tall. You both saying the same thing, you just saying, saying the same thing. Yeah, you know, that's what I get out the argument about defunding the police. It's like it's semantics you argue. All of you, I, I've heard everyone say reallocate the money in different ways. In a different okay, so way. reallocate the money is different than defund. When I hear defund, that means take away point blank, period. Again, I'm in agreement with you. I'm saying if it needs to be defined what these people mean, it should have been taken out of context. What you okay. mean by defunding police is, is getting rid of the police. That's not what right. they were saying when they brought it out. And that's what's important about the news people, this remote thing we're doing. That's why we have to, that. that's why we have to have our own media. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to tell the stories the way they should be told, the, the way we see them, the not the way them. others see them. Right. Just like I just found out that Sullivan, I haven't been following uh, Sullivan's uh, uh his his background or anything but i've seen plenty of commercials saying that he wasn't in the service and he's perpetrating that he's a veteran yeah. and yada 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 and then come to find out that he did serve in one of the uh wars overseas so where is the truth at? How do we determine the truth? You get so many stories about people going back and forth. And I only brought this up because we're in an election time and we need to know and hear what people are saying and where their minds and their hearts are. So we we'll, can make the educated decision when we go to the polls. Absolutely. We better start uh, strategizing today about the process we're going to use to get people in front of our audiences to tell us what it is they're running for and why and why we should decide to elect them over someone else because right. the way this uh <laughs> election process goes most of the people that go to the polls they don't know these folks Specifically, just going by specifically what they hear on the commercial, judges, what somebody told them. The judges, they don't know. Right. Until them, they or their children or family member get in front of that judge, that's <laughs> the only time they find out who Judge Blue is, the one that lock everybody up. Mm -hmm. so the point is, we need to get some of them judges in front of us and let them explain to us why we should elect re-elect them or elect them or elect them yeah well you know part of the problem it is so many running yeah and and then they're protected by a code where it's so much they can only say and when you get down to the real nitty-gritty you don't know who to vote for you 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 don't have a group that in the courts on a day to day basis following their opinions their decisions and then come back and tell us who's the best one to vote for. Right. We don't really we, have that. No, we don't. And, and that's a problem because mm -hmm. at the end of the ballot, you got almost a hundred some judges to vote yep. for. Yeah, that's and the that, whole point. And you get the way that we're talented. doing this. It's, it's just, you know, it's not good because people don't know who they're voting for. They're just voting. And some people don't vote at all, and they are voting. So the point is the process. We need to look at the process and figure out how it needs to be augmented because it doesn't work. Well, the process can't get overhauled unless we overhaul some of the folks we send to Springfield. Because when they go to Whatever. Springfield, we yep. may vote for them, but when they get down there, they do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And and that's her nuts. That's just like. But but now when they do that and we follow them and know that they say, OK, you said this here at, at one point and now you get down there, you don't you're not doing 
what you said you're going to do what for whatever reason then we should hold their feet to the fire when Absolutely. it's time to, to come around again well, we shouldn't wait one. until it's time to come around again we, we can't, they, we can't they help do whatever that. they do we need to hold their feet to the fire right then yeah but if if we can't or or for whatever reason you know I can tell you one thing as I'm uh, up for election, I can tell you everything you want to hear. But once I get in office, I don't care that I'm not doing what I said I was going to do. I'm in here now. What you going to do about it? So what I'm saying is, yeah, we have to remind them and hold them, but they come time to get elected again. We got to say, okay, you promised this, that, and the other, and now here you are trying to get elected again. No, move over. <laughs> all right. Welcome to the show, Labette. Welcome to the thank show, you. Jerome. How are you all? Just great, thank you. How are you? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, you, you, you guys listening to uh, the conversation we were talking about things that we might want to say to our president had we been invited prior and, and uh, prior to him arriving, we could have uh, put together our list of questions and at least had one opportunity to say something to him. So, so we're going we're gonna to talk to him afterwards, send an email to the White House based well, on what we uh, talk about today. What whatever we, our our decisions are today about what he did. He came here. He went to Kankakee to see the farmers. Then he went to the McCormick place for the um, IBEW, uh, uh, the union, the electricians, the electric electric electricians union. And then he went to the DNC. I don't know if he's gotten there yet, but that's his next stop. The uh, Democratic National Convention. Mm -hmm. then, That's the committee. The That's committee. The, and then and then he's going to head to O'Hare. That's I his itinerary. That's up on the way. Mm -hmm. And I think what I think our follow up should be. Um, you know, the first thing is we as, as a unit, as black people, we have to identify what it is that we need. Exactly. And um, and and as far as holding elected officials accountable, I think once they get in and they don't um, commit to what they promised, that it should be a writing campaign immediately. No matter what they do or don't do, if they don't well if they don't do the right thing they do not like to see their name in the press and we can immediately start to say um alderman so-and-so promised this and on this day he voted to do something different uh on this day senator so-and-so promised to do something and on this day he did something different you know, holding elected officials accountable. And so, you know, no one likes to see their name in a bad light. And that's the thing we don't do is that if they do anything, we don't say anything until they're ready to get back in office. And the question is, well, what have you done for me lately? Rather than you didn't do this on this day. Okay, exactly. you got to an answer. And so we've got to hold them accountable. And then I think that the way the government is going now and the way this, this nation is going, the focus is on what the Republicans are doing and how they're feeding the country fake news and how they're denying January 8th and how they didn't do anything and how it was a peaceful march and a peaceful rally rather than democrats saying you all a bunch of scum buckets you didn't <laughs> do anything you were supposed to do you wrecked the the, the uh uh the 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 capital you uh you tried to steal the election you'd get on tv every day and you lie 
And and we have to, and then question, are you really, are you, do you really believe what's coming out of your mouth? <laughs> because yeah. they, 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 it's all lies. It's and all so lies. we've got to figure out how to combat these lies because if the government seems to be headed in the wrong direction, as far as the alt-right, the Proud Boys, those kind of groups that seem to have a uh, pull in this society, anybody that knows anything about them know they don't like Black people. And if they had an opportunity, they would wipe us off the face of the, of, of the, of the earth. And hmm. so if you've got some people that are existing in your sphere like that, and you're not trying to do anything to, to keep them in check because when statistics show that gun owners, 80% of all white people own guns, 10% of black people own guns, about same eight something percent Hispanic and Asian two, 3%. So what does that say? If there's a race war, we don't have anything to shield us. We, of course, I, 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 you know, the most high is my almighty. And I, I, I rely on my faith to keep me safe. But reality, look at Ukraine. They had nothing to defend themselves with. So they wound up being refugees and being killed. So we're at a point that this government and most governments, just like in the Philippines, the, uh, most, the most horrible dictator, his son just took over. So mm. it's, it's like this is the this is the 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 movement across the globe is to promote and 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 the rise of dictators and oligarchs and all of those kind of people. All so right. it's like, where do we fit as black people? What is our message? What is our narrative? What all do right. we need? What do we want? Jerome, let's hear from you. Hello. Hi. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I just, right. I just want to say, um, I, I echo what LeVette is saying. I think that in our communities, we have, uh, or, or probably in the world, but in our communities, we have so many issues. And when we're trying to identify, we really don't have a way to say, uh, hey, these are the 10 things or the 20 things that's important to us. Yeah. And how are you going to deal with those 20 things? Because we have so much going on. You know, we got all these different roads. And so when we bring this to a politician, they're going to say, yeah. They don't have a plan for it. They just say, yeah, I'll handle that. I'll handle this, knowing that they really can't do it. So I think <laughs> it's like the vet is saying, we need to have our, our, our 10, 20 or whatever it is issues that we want them to adjust or uh, uh, adhere to so that we know that our needs are being met. Uh, one of the things that I have learned, and, and LeVette knows me and, and Wanda knows me, we've been in this business a long time, but we're fighting just to get peanuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so I just think that there's so much going on. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think we, we need to focus on a strategy to help us change the way the election system operates. Because we know just based on what they did with the property tax 